season's greetings from the Learfield IMG College Network. Tonight, the Purdue Fort Wayne Mastodons host the Judson Eagles in a big game here, the final game of the 2019 portion of the Don season here at the Coliseum. Welcome to Purdue Fort Wayne basketball along with former Indiana Tech head coach Jeff Parrish. I'm Kent Horman filling in for John Nolan tonight and coach the Dons looking to rebound from a very very tough loss at the University of Illinois Chicago a game in which they did not shoot the basketball well especially from behind the arc. Extremely poor performance from the Mastodons shooting the ball like you said only 17 percent behind the arc. 36% uh, for the game. So let's see if they have a little bit of different philosophy tonight and use their big man 6'11", Dylan Carl on the inside. Shoots nearly 58% from the field, eight points a game, four, po four rebounds per game. Let's use him tonight to get things going on the inside. And another one of the storylines for this game will be the availability of Brian Patrick, the second leading scorer on the team. He went down with an injury at Illinois Chicago, so it looks like Demir Black may be getting the start for him at one of the guard slots tonight. We'll have to see how that develops. Exactly. He counts on for a lot of scoring for the Mastodons, and therefore, Jared Godfrey, he had to put up 21 shots in the loss at Illinois Chicago. Probably a little bit more than Coach Kaufman would like to see. So let's hear maybe Demir Black can step in and fill the shoes for Brian Patrick tonight. The Mastodons have been very, very busy. This will be their 13th game of the season. After tonight, they will have played more games than anybody in Division I college basketball. They're hoping to leave this building tonight with a record of 7-6. and six. They have played Judson four times previously in the past, all of the meetings in Fort Wayne. They have won all four games, but the last time they played was almost five years ago. Not really sure much about Judson they're an NAIA team. They're two and nine. But I'll tell you what, Jeff, looking in the warm-ups, they're big. They're big. They're athletic. Hey, they give scholarships, too. So let's hopefully tonight this is a kind of a make it feel good game for the Mastodons. Playing an NAIA opponent, a team that they should handle pretty well, I would say. So let's feel good about this game, hopefully, when it's over. And hopefully they have to build some confidence because, as I stated, this is the final home game of the 2019 portion of their season. They still have two games to go to wrap up the 2019 part. This Saturday, they go to IUPUI, and then they'll wrap up the 2019 part of their schedule with a tough road trip to Iowa State. So they need this game big time here tonight. They need to get back on track, shooting the ball like they do from three-point land, and then head into the uh, latter part of December with those two tough games leading into the last year for the Summit League. Okay, it's going to be a good one for the Dons. Hopefully, if they can get to that 7-6 and six mark, feel good about themselves, get over 500. Purdue, Fort Wayne, and Judson coming up next on the Learfield IMG College Network. This little pumpkin's BB, she's my baby and that's why I'm here. All right, looking for something pooch friendly? Yes, I want pumpkin here to feel safe and snuggly when I want to feel rugged. Well, we got plenty of Jeeps, uh, Durango's, plenty of room for the dog in the back. How many will fit comfortably? Uh, seven or eight adults. How many dogs? Oh, 11, 12. Shotgun BB. 13. Glenbrook Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. We've been fetching deals since 1979. Drive a Scat Pack Dodge Charger over 10,000 off MSRP with Dodge Power Dollars at Glenbrook Dodge. Oh, she got a little too excited. I'll get a towel. This is where ambition meets action. Where you can experience everything and become anything. So ask yourself, what are you going to be? A business leader. An artist. A scientist. A difference maker. A game changer. This is an education with purpose. We are Purdue University Fort Wayne. 
We're back at the Coliseum, Kent Horman and Jeff Parrish just about set for basketball. Home standing Purdue Fort Wayne taking on Judson. There you see the starting lineups. Each team going with a lot of guards to Marcus Williams, Jordan Johnson, Darius Jones, Johnny Flynn, and Bryce Prohaska are the starting five for Judson. For the Dons, Jared Godfrey. And this is the story. Demir Black is getting the start in place of Brian Patrick. Marcus DeBerry, Matt Holba, and Dylan Carl. Ball is in the air, and it is won by the Mastodons. And so Fort Wayne will have the first trip down the floor. And it is handled by the new starter, Demir Black. Now it comes up top into the corner. First shot is underway, and that is rimmed off. A three-point attempt in the corner by Godfrey. Judson with the rebound back the other way. Here comes Demarcus Williams. Williams is picked up high by Godfrey. Now a little bump off that time as they try to get the ball near the baseline, cut off. Comes back up top and it's intercepted as Johnny Flynn has his pocket picked. Going in for the easy lay-in is Jared Godfrey and the draw, draw first blood. That's been the story, all I think, all year long for the Mastons. They gotta have a good start, Kent. Good, hard, aggressive on ball defense right there. You saw Jared get in the passing lane, and he got the run out. They need to get easy baskets here tonight. Flynn up top, picked up high by Matt Holba. Now Godfrey rides his man off the play. Driving attempt, a little fade away, and that bounces off the rim that time. As it was Demarcus Williams bidding for the first bucket for Judson. Now back the other way, slashing in for the lay-in, high off the glass, and getting the roll that time was Matt Holba, so it's 4-0 in favor of the Dons. That's very important for Matt Kent. Had struggled with Illinois Chicago last weekend, 0 for 6 from the field. He took the ball to the basket, saw the opening, and gets the easy two points. Now Williams, who is the leading scorer for Judson with 17 points, leaves it for Darius Jones into the corner. And we have a whistle and a travel, a turnover against the Eagles. So, so far I've seen a little bit more energy than I have the last few home games here at the Coliseum out of the Mastodons. And I think that's gonna be huge tonight. Get that good start, get back on the winning track again, especially with a, a, an aggressive defense. Now Dylan Carl eyes it, flips it over to Godfrey. Godfrey. Comes it off to Marcus D. Berry. Holba kicks it out. Three ball on the way, and that glances off the front of the rim, then bounces off the shoulder of Carl. Here comes Judson back the other way. Now Jordan Johnson dancing around, but he's got the long arms of Godfrey to contend with. Good little bounce pass, taken to the rack with authority that time was Prohaska, but he was blocked. The ball goes out of bounds. Great defense that time by the Dons. Right there, good weak side help, slid over there, got the block. Now Johnny Flynn, he has a hand in his face by Holba. Well, you got that long arm and body of Jared Godfrey playing some oppressive defense. Now a little stutter step. And the shot does not get off before the buzzer, so Darius Jones didn't find anything. Good defense by the Dons results in another turnover on the shot clock violation. Exactly, Kent. Great defense right there. They're pressuring the ball on the perimeter. Uh, a lot of times we've seen in the past, they have not pressured that ball that hard on the perimeter, therefore giving up driving lanes. That time, shot clock violation, ball pressure. Dons get the ball back. Now Holba who is definitely a three-point threat, comes cross-court. Godfrey with a drive, kicks it back out. Now Holba, long shot on the way by Deberry, and that rims out, but the rebound goes to Carl, and he draws a personal foul. A little bit what we talked about in the pregame, Dylan Carl, he's got to own the glass here tonight. 6'11", biggest player on the floor. He's got to be a dominant factor for the Mastodons, especially on the inside. We know he can step out and shoot the three, but he needs to work on those post moves and crash the glass. Now an aggressive drive that time, but Black is rejected on the play by Brohaska, and back the other way soar the Eagles. Kicked out, three on the way, and that is too strong, as that time Flynn hit the back of the iron. Now the Dons try to come back the other way with some pace. Black, wide open for three is Holba, and he hits. Long time coming there for Matt. 0 for 6, like we said last 
last week at Illinois Chicago from the three-point line right off the bat tonight big big bucket by Matt he needs that confidence especially going in to the Summit League here in a couple weeks and Darius Jones is called for the offensive foul as he sends Deberry to the floor So already 7-0 in favor of Purdue-Fort Wayne as we approach the 16-minute mark. Black surveying the situation. Gets it to Holba. Holba methodically. Kicking it into the corner. Black. And there's a three ball that, oh, it curls in and out that time by Dylan Carl. That was about three-fourths the way down, but the basket spit it out. Now coming back the other way, Demarcus Williams, and a back, <laughs> a behind-the-back pass that goes right to John Kaufman. So we Caused have reached our first... Black's defense. We have, we have reached our first media timeout, and as we go to break, the Dons have a one-touchdown lead. They lead Judson 7-0. And you are watching Mastodon Basketball on the Learfield IMG College Network. At Diamond Residential Mortgage, we understand the importance of keeping pace with technology. And we offer a completely digital loan process to our customers who choose to take advantage of that option. But we also understand the magnitude of a home purchase. And one of our loan officers will work with you every step of the loan process to make sure all your questions are answered and the right type of loan is tailored to fit your needs. See Diamond Residential Mortgage. The Acme Bar and Grill, where neighbors meet. A Fort Wayne tradition since 1941. We feature nightly dinner specials along with our iconic pizza, wings, and pork tenderloins and barbecue in our family-friendly atmosphere with a retro flair. Additionally, we offer a full bar with 26 beers on tap from various Midwest breweries. We also have an area perfect for private events such as meetings, reunions, and banquets that holds up to 50 people. The Acme Bar and Grill, located in the heart of East State Village, where neighbors meet. Purdue Fort Wayne basketball. Buy your tickets now. With former Indiana Tech head coach Jeff Parrish, Kent Horman here. You take a look at some recent results for Purdue Fort Wayne losing at Ohio State, but then they reeled off four in a row until that streak ended last Saturday with the 62 49 loss to UIC. So the Dons with the 7 0 lead. Demir Black. Little drive, kicks it into the corner, got free for three, and that's just off the iron. Long rebound comes out, and it's corralled by Jordan Johnson. He crosses center court, picked up by Black. Now to Flynn. Oh, Johnson saves it. And then there's a long three ball that's off the mark by Jordan Johnson. So back the other way, here come the Dons. They're still pitching a shutout at the 15-minute mark, leading 7-0. Kicked out to Holba. Dons are really sharing the basketball. Long three by Holba. That's off the front of the rim. They battle underneath. Dons try to go up amongst heavy traffic, and that time Cameron Benford drew a host of Eagles, and he draws the personal foul. That's what Cameron's in there for. He comes off the bench. He gives us a spark right, right away. He's crashing the offensive boards, gets fouled. He's at the free throw line to shoot, too. Benford, the junior, out of Seattle, Washington. And misses the first. You know, the early story here, Kent, seven to nothing. You know, Purdue Fort Wayne still not really shooting the ball very well, only at 37%, but it's their defense. It's picked them up here early on. They're pressuring the ball, getting out in the passing lane, causing all kinds of problems for the Judson team. Well, Demir Black gets a handshake from John Kaufman. If you just may be joining us, Black starting in favor of Brian Patrick, who had an upper leg injury last Saturday at Illinois Chicago, and he is usually a starter, but not in the lineup tonight. Loose ball, picked up by Prohaska. Long three on the way, and again, that's too strong by Flynn. Prohaska with the rebound, takes it up in traffic, and it's in and out, but he draws the personal foul. And that'll be on Benford, his first. 
Prochaska there at 6'8", hammering the offensive glass. The Don's got to keep him off the, off the board. You can see what happened there. He had two or three chances at it that time and ends up at the free throw line making the first one. And we can take another look at it. He threaded his way through the Don's defense and drew that foul on Benford. And again, tonight's game day injury report brought to you by Fort Wayne Athletics medical provider OPS, keeping you in the game. And again, the Mastodons without Brian Patrick tonight. That second free throw is off the mark. I think he's just being held out for precautionary reasons, so he's ready to go this Saturday at IUPUI. Good move by Coach Kaufman, even though he is the Don's second leading scorer and very, very valuable on the, on the floor, a lot of experience. I just want to make sure that he's going to be okay uh, to finish up the month there in December going into the Summit League. Well, Godfrey thought he drew a personal foul as he weaved his way through a nest of eagles, but no foul was called. The ball went out of bounds and last touched by Adon. So Judson trying to add to the single point they have so far, and we're under 14 minutes to go in the first half. Flynn flips it out to Jordan Johnson. His long shot well off the mark. Godfrey corrals the rebound, and the Dons set sail the other way. Now it's Godfrey kicking it across. That's a three ball on the way, and that's off the mark by Tion Rollins. Rebound to the Eagles. They're trying to run some floor. Darius Jones on the wing, tries to spin down the lane. Left-handed, a little too strong, and Godfrey goes up and corrals the ball with two hands. Now Godfrey, who loves to run the floor, Deontay Billups over to Holba. Holba with a little floating left-hander, and it uses most of the rim, but drops in. It's good to see from Matt. He's not settling for the jump shot from the wing area. He saw the open lane to the basket. Two hard dribbles, laid it up with his left hand. Holba has seven, and at the 13-minute mark, the Don's on top 10-1. to one. Underneath, well, I'll tell you what, the lid is on the rim for Judson as that time. Darius Jones couldn't get it to fall. He tumbles to the floor. The Dons come away with a loose ball, and here comes Godfrey. Godfrey with a look each way. Just flips it back out to Benford. Benford looking for an entry pass. Leaves instead for Holba. Holba down the lane. Another little lay-in attempt with the finger roll. That time it's off the mark. Loose ball. They scramble for it on the floor, and coming away with it is Darius Jones. Jones tries for the lay-in, and he's got it. So that is the first field goal for Judson coming at the 12-22 mark to make it a 10-3 Mastodon lead. Godfrey draws about four of the Eagles on him. Now it's kicked back out to Godfrey. His three is good. Good ball rotation that time by the Dons. They've got their second three-pointer. That's five for Godfrey, and it's 13-3. Perfect rhythm there for Jared Kent. Hands and feet ready. Nice stroke, top of the key for the three. Little fade away along the baseline that time by Jordan Johnson. Off the mark, rebound though. Winds up back in the hands of Judson. And Johnson, he tries for a little bit of a circus move underneath and that is rejected. So here come the Dons again. Godfrey leading the charge. Cut. 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 Now it's Holba to Billups. Cut. Now it's flipped down low, Benford. Draws all sorts of defense, and he throws it over his shoulder. It almost rolls in. Loose ball just picked up, and that time it's in and out there. Oh, Tyrone Rollins thought he was going to have an easy lay-in, and I'll tell you what, the rims haven't been very friendly both ways. They're really tight here tonight, both teams. 11.21 to go here in the opening half. The Dons lead 13-3, and you are watching Purdue-Fort Wayne basketball on the Learfield IMG College Network. This little pumpkin's BB. She's my baby, and that's why I'm here. All right, looking for something pooch friendly? Yes, I want pumpkin here to feel safe and snuggly when I want to feel rugged. Well, we got plenty of Jeeps, uh, Durangos, plenty of room for the dog in the back. How many will fit comfortably? Uh, seven or eight adults. How many dogs? Oh, 11, 12. Shotgun BB. 13. Glenbrook Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. We've been fetching deals since 1979. Drive a Scat Pack Dodge Charger over 10,000 off MSRP with Dodge Power Dollars at Glenbrook Dodge. Oh, she got a little too excited. I'll get a towel. This is where ambition meets action. Where you can experience everything and become anything. So ask yourself, what are you going to be? 
A business leader. An artist. A scientist. A difference maker. A game changer. This is an education with purpose. We are Purdue University, Fort Wayne. Well, know your foe, and this is a look at the Judson Eagles. They're in Elgin, Illinois, founded 1913, an enrollment of 1,230 people. Their affiliations are a member of the NAIA, and they're in the Chicagoland Collegiate Athletic Conference. And again, we talked about it in the Glenbrook Dodge pregame show, that this is the fifth time the Mastodons have met Judson. The prior four meetings have been here in Fort Wayne, and the Dons have won all four meetings. Last time they met, though, was five years ago, back in 2014. Prohaska leaves for Darius Jones, comes across to a new entry in the lineup. That was to Sean Patterson, and now down low, there'll be a foul charge to the Dons, and that will go against Dylan Carl. Dylan came down straight over his arms that time on the shot. No question about that one. So Jawan Savage, who entered the lineup, 6'8 senior out of Chicago, misses the free throw. Looked a little rough there, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, did. Right there you see Dylan get a little bit of the arms that time. Maybe a good foul. What's well, getting your money's worth? 13 to 3 lead for the Dons, and free throw shooting is not Savage's forte because neither one of those was remotely close, and the Dons control the rebound. Black. Now the Dons, good rotation along the perimeter. Driving the lane, stopping was DeBerry. Now there's a long three ball on the way. That was off the mark that time by Rollins. And here come the Eagles back the other way. Entry pass to Prohaska, that bounced high, now it's loose, and the Dons intercept, and here comes Marcus DeBerry. On the run, going for the lay-in, and it curls out, but the rebound tip in that time by Deontay Billups. And now the lead swells to a dozen. One more athletic newcomers to this Mastodon team. Run the court at 6-4, 6-5 frame. Josh Nkumsa draws the holding foul. Nkumsa, the redshirt freshman, out of Barrie, Ontario. Hockey land. Yes, it is. That's a good hockey hotbed. Now Prohaska up top. Gets it across to Darius Jones. Tries to penetrate. Pulls up for about the 15-footer off the front of the rim. D. Barry has it. And he comes back the other way. Under 10 minutes to go here. Opening half. Don's lead 15-3. They ring it around the perimeter. D. Berry with the drive. Cut off by Prohaska. A three ball on the way, and that's good. Deontay Phillips joins the three-point parade, and the Dons now up by 15, 18 to three as we approach the nine and a half minute mark of this opening half. Good penetration by Marcus D. Berry that time. Collapsed the defense, kicked it out to the wing. And another good Deontay. defensive play that time by Black to tip the ball away. Last touched by Judson. John Kaufman signaling a play right in front of us. Demir Black running the point now when he's in the game. Coach Kaufman calls him maybe one of their best on-ball defenders. Nkumsa gets his defender off his feet, goes up with authority and banks it in. Josh Nkumsa. That was a nice little up and under move by the big man inside. He doesn't get a lot of playing time, but when he does so far this year, he's been fairly productive. Now Prohaska out to, to Sean Patterson. Patterson threads his way through a couple of Dons, then drives and kicks it out. And we have a travel. So turnovers galore committed by Judson. And it looks like Coach Kaufman substituting a little more liberally here in the latter stages of the half. Get some of these guys some minutes that usually don't see the floor as much early here in the first half. A lot of times, they, you know, substitutions are freely made later in the second half, but a good opportunity for some of these guys to get some valuable playing time here early on. 
Black draws a foul that time on Tashawn Patterson. Tashawn Patterson charged with a personal foul. His first for Hey, Jackson. we need a pod, man. Come on, we're organized. Well, one thing we can get the impression of, John Kaufman wants his team to play hard, even though you would think a Division I team against an NAIA team that has a 2-9 and nine record would be a bit of a mismatch, and so far it is, as that three ball is rimmed in and out by Demir Black. He wants his team to play hard. You know he's already prepping for these final two road games of the 2019 part of the schedule. IUPUI and Iowa State. An interception by the Dons as Nkumsa got into that passing lane. And he steps on the baseline. That time when the pass went to Deontay Phillips, he had one of those big shoes on the side court line. And now that turnover gives the ball right back to Judson. Sean Patterson being guarded by Black. 8-10 to go here in the first half. 20-3 in favor of the Dons. And they have played an oppressive defense. Oppressive defense. And yet another offense. turnover by Judson. But you talked about Coach Coffin wanting his team to play well here tonight. They need to play well, Kent, after Saturday's performance at Illinois Chicago, where their offense may have been one of Coach Kaufman's lowest outputs in his career here at Fort Wayne at 49 points for the game. They need to polish up and uh, get this offense on the right track. Godfrey kicks it over. Now a little bit of a drive, a spin move by Black. Flips it back out. Stutter step that time. Oh, what a great pass by DeBerry. But that time, Dylan Carl has his attempt to go up strongly. Blocked. So we have reached the under eight timeout. 7.40 to go here in the opening half. It's been all Mastodons. They lead Judson by the score of 20 to 3. You're watching Purdue Fort Wayne basketball on the Learfield IMG College Network. Dreaming of getting cash back in your pocket with every purchase you make? With a Visa Rewards credit card from Fort Financial, you can earn 1% back on everything you buy and a low introductory rate of just 3.9% APR with no annual fees or balance transfer fees so you can consolidate debt. You even get online access to view transactions or pay bills. Stop by your local branch or fortfinancialcu.org today. Fort Financial, it's time to live your dreams. My philosophy has always been, what would I do if this was my mother? You have the blessing from God to know that you're serving in a capacity that you truly love. This isn't a job to me. They're coming to us at their most vulnerable. They're coming to us at a time when they're dealing with something totally unexpected. And when you see people go through that every day, it kind of gives you uh, motivation to be your best. We have some of the best clinical staff that I have ever worked with in my 20 some years of healthcare. Jeff Parrish, Ken Horman back at the Coliseum. And the Mastodons, one of five Division I teams with 100 plus made three point field goals in the first month of the season. Tell you what, Jeff, we've talked about this in the past when I used to do Purdue Fort Wayne basketball, either on the radio or on TV, as we see a three ball loaded up that time by Matt Holba. Oftentimes, the team lives by the three and perishes by the three. And that's what happened to them up at UIC when they only shot 17% from behind the arc. Yeah, they launched 29 three-pointers up there at Chicago, only made five of them. And it's like you said, it's live or die by the three. And already here tonight, they're three for 13 for about 22%. And Holba had to hoist one up to beat the shot clock. That was off the front of the rim. Driving down the lane, but throwing an errant pass that time was Darius Jones as it caromed right off the hands of Jawan Savage and out of bounds. So the turnover parade continues. 11, 11 turnovers for Judson right wow, now. Wow, that's a lot here. With still seven minutes, 10 seconds to go in the first half. Little jump hook that time is off the mark by Dylan Carl after he took a good entry pass. That's where Dylan has to get a little bit better with his back to the basket down there on the low post to make those little jump hooks. Prohaska puts up a shot from about 18, skying for the rebound. That time is Godfrey, and he is rushing it down the floor, kicks it into the corner, three on the way, good! That time, Marcus D. Berry with the triple. And the lead has swelled to 20 at 23-3. to 
You know, back in the old days, Kent, you used to get a, a two-on-one or two-on-two -two fast break. You're not expecting a three-point shot. You're thinking about maybe getting a layup. But the Mastodons right there, living and dying by the three, hit that open shot in the corner. Well, Darius Jones missed the first layup, but was able to somehow knife his way through, grab the rebound, and put it through to make it 23-5. to five. Well, that time Black thought about the shot, but the Dons are really sharing the ball a lot here in this opening half. Holba has his pocket picked, and now back the other way. Hustling down is Cedric Payne. Payne, one of the smallest guys on the floor, generously listed at five foot nine inches. Now the pass goes down to Prohaska, open up top. That jumper is off the mark that time by Savage, and the Dons control the basketball. Flipped ahead to Godfrey. Into the corner, three on the way, good! As that time, Demir Black lights it up from the right corner. 26-5 to five in favor of the Dons. They're a little bit better by the Mastodons. Last two possessions, two threes in both corners. Judson tries to answer, but that three ball is off the mark. They get the rebound underneath as working hard for that board was Savage. Off the miss by Cedric Payne, so Savage will go to the free throw line. There Dylan Kyle got caught standing behind Savage that time. Savage, big, strong kid. Uh, nothing Dylan could do to get him out of the way. Well, he badly missed his first two free throw attempts, and he hits that one. Right Take a look at the work Dylan underneath. Caught behind the, the offensive player here. That they could do, but just foul. See if Savage can make another one here. What do you think? That's way too strong. And the rebound is pulled down by Nkumsa. Now here's Godfrey. A little between the leg dribble. He likes to handle the basketball. TD Berry. Now he comes over to Billups. And down low and traveling that time was in Kumsa. Caught the ball, shuffled his feet. He thought his defender was a little bit closer than he was and uh, made his move, and there was nobody there and got caught with the travel. I should mention our officials tonight are Dave Cronin, Michael Swoboda, and Tyler Kumpf. The Troika working the game. Now pinned in the corners, Darius Jones, he kicks it out to Flynn. Trying to drive and penetrate that time. Going up with the left hand was Payne, but that's off the mark. And the Dons come back the other way with numbers. Wide open in the corner for three, and that's off the mark that time by Billups. And now Judson back the other way. Jordan Johnson. Cut off that time by Godfrey. He puts up a long jumper. That's off iron. Rebound is corralled by Nkumsa. And he flips ahead to Billups. Billups to DeBerry. Godfrey comes off the Nkumsa screen. Now it's out to Nkumsa. He's going to load one up. And that barely grazes the front of the iron. And now the Eagles are flying back the other way. We're under the four-minute mark. Well, trying to penetrate with reverse lane, and that's in and out by Darius Jones. Jones somehow, he gets the ball back, intercepted that time by DeBerry. He's tripped up. And we have an official's timeout. We are under four minutes to play at the 340 mark, so we'll take a break. It's the Mastodons 26 and Judson 6. You're watching Purdue-Fort Wayne basketball on the Learfield IMG College Network. Now that's eating good in the neighborhood. 
At Diamond Residential Mortgage, we understand the importance of keeping pace with technology, and we offer a completely digital loan process to our customers who choose to take advantage of that option. But we also understand the magnitude of a home purchase, and one of our loan officers will work with you every step of the loan process to make sure all your questions are answered and the right type of loan is tailored to fit your needs. See Diamond Residential Mortgage. Well, let's take a look around campus. Women's basketball is at Eastern Michigan tonight. Then they will host Evansville on Friday the 13th at Butler on December 22nd. Then conference play begins New Year's Day against South Dakota. Men's and women's track and field at Indiana Tech this Saturday at Grand Valley State on January 10th. The Mastodon Invitational January 18th. And the YSU National Invitational. Following that, men's track back in Purdue Fort Wayne land so as we approach three and a half to go it's been all Purdue Fort Wayne and there is another turnover by Judson that is turnover number 13 here in the first half both of those turnovers unforced as you saw that one right there they've had several times they've stepped on the sideline a couple traveling calls starting to pile up now for Judson Godfrey dribbles right. Gets the ball in the hands of Deontay Billups. He's picked up by Darius Jones. And now the big man, Kumsa, kicks it back out. Three on the way, and it's good! Jared Godfrey! His second three-pointer of the game. And at the three-minute mark, the Don's on top, 29-6. to six. Working the ball as Jordan Johnson tries to drive the lane but loses the handle. Ball goes out of bounds. Coming up at halftime, we'll have a special interview with John Conchar, the former Mastodon great who is under a two-way contract with Memphis. He's either playing with the Grizzlies or he's on their G League team, and he has seen action in the NBA. And yet another turnover by Judson on that errant pass. So it'll be good to check in with John Conchar coming up at halftime. I think he's had a little bit of a injury bug here in the last couple of weeks, but hopefully he's back on track and uh, getting some playing time. Well, Godfrey. Rollins gets it to Billups. Billups tries a little shift, has the ball poked out of his hands briefly, then it's poked out a second time, and this time it's in the hands of the Eagles to Sean Patterson. Now Billups is all over him. Comes across to Payne. Payne dribbles right, takes a look, tries to spin near the block. He's cut off that time by Nkumsa. Now back out to Jordan Johnson. Comes across that time. They work it down low. Look out! That's good thing the coach had good hands. Is that Soft well up. overshot Johnny Flynn? <laughs> it's a good thing Jeff Parrish had the big mitt out there. Good defense little, by the coach. Played a little outfield. It's almost like a line drive coming back to the pitcher's mound, too. Now Godfrey looks right, now goes right to Billups. Holba slashing down the lane a little bit out of control. It comes back out, three on the way. Good! That time Matt Holba with yet another triple. And we now have a minute and a half to go here in the first half, 32 to six in favor of Purdue Fort Wayne. Little stutter step sideways and knocking down the jumper is Tashawn Patterson. That is a much needed basket for Judson. 32 to eight. Almost feel kind of good for him about that. Now Godfrey as Billups stops up top. They get it down. Here's Godfrey slashing down the lane. Loses the ball briefly. Now flips it. Here's Billups trying for the lay-in. He gets it and draws the foul. Deontay Billups taking it to the rack with authority, banking it off the glass, and drawing the foul. I think Coach Kaufman has big plans for Deontay in the future. He's getting a lot, a lot of playing time here as a freshman, and you can see his athletic ability. He's able to get the glass. Uh, plus, he can step out and shoot that three-pointer as well. 
He does miss the free throw, trying for the three-point play, and then a reach-in foul is called on Josh Nkumsa. And it looks like Judson's going to take a 30-second timeout. So once again, don't forget to join us at halftime for the John Conchar interview. And again, we talked about this in the Glenbrook Dodge pregame show. This is the final home game of the 2019 portion of the Don schedule. Taking a look at John Kaufman, this is season number six. He recently reached the 100 win mark, 102 and 74, winning as coach in the program's Division I history. 2016 Summit League Coach of the Year. Here's a look at Brian Thrift, the coach of Judson. This is his fourth season, went to Rochester College. Previous experience, Brentwood Christian School in Austin, Texas, and he also was a varsity baseball coach. Under a minute to go here in the opening half. Jordan Johnson being picked up very high that time by Tion Rollins. And there's a whistle. Looked like there was a foul that time. Right here, Coach Kaufman, he really wants to stop them here. He doesn't want them to have a, a last second shot or go into the half feeling good about making a bucket. He wants to get a stop, and he wants to score on the other end himself. A three. As soon as I say that, they drop a three. Johnny on Flynn <laughs> loads up the triple and knocks it down. It's down to the final 20 seconds, but still all Dons at 34-11. And John Kaufman wants to take a quick 30-second timeout. Just to call a set play with 16 seconds. This will come right from Coach Kaufman's scratch board there. He's going to draw one up and see if he can get a bucket. Well, and again, after tonight's game, the Mastodons will head to IUPUI for a noon tip-off. That's this coming Saturday. And then they complete the 2019 portion of their schedule on December 22nd with a tough game at Iowa State. So that will be a game that will really probably prepare the Dons for conference play, which, interestingly enough, Jeff, begins on New Year's Day. So a new year on New Year's Day, and the Mastodons kick off Summit League play with a New Year's afternoon game against South Dakota. That will be a 3 p.m. tip. At the Gate Center at the gate center i really think that is a huge huge home court advantage yes when they can get these tougher uh, summit league teams in the gate center now taking it down to the final seconds black is just letting the clock wind down under 10. he's given up his dribble three seconds two seconds one holba has to put up a desperation shot and i believe drew a foul Draws the foul on Darius Jones. And with seven tenths of a second to go, he'll get three free throws. So I guess that play worked. If he scores one of them. Nothing but net on that one. Here Coach Kaufman right in front of us saying no foul, no foul. Second free throw is good. And now Holba, who's had a very, very strong first half, will go for the hat trick. And he gets it. So 13 points in the first half for Holba. Just a desperation shot that does clank off the rim at the buzzer. So the Mastodons head to the locker room after the opening 20 minutes with an impressive 37 to 11 lead. Jeff, your thoughts about the performance both ways for the Dons, both offensively and defensively. Well, number one, offensively, still not shooting the ball uh, the way they want it. They've had a couple spurts where they've hit two or three in a row from the deep corners um, that extend the lead. I think early on their defense uh, got them that big lead. They shut down Judson totally offensively, but the pressure on the perimeter was very, very good, I thought, getting in the passing lane. They got a couple easy baskets out of that as well. Um, second half, coming out this second half, energy. 
that first five minutes of the second half, they got to bury these guys as bad as they can get them. First five minutes, they need energy from all players on the bench because you know Coach Kaufman, he's going to be calling on that bench quickly here the second half to get these guys rotated in and get them minutes. Well, it is halftime here with the Dons leading 37 to 11. Lutheran Health Network, a proud sponsor of the Fort Wayne Mastodons halftime show. Ready Med, a member of Lutheran Health Network, has convenient hours in five locations in Fort Wayne and New Haven, whether it's a sprain, a rash of the flu that has you down. Ready Med is there when you need them. This is live, powered by Lutheran, lutheranhealth.net. So we'll take a break, and coming up, an interview with the Mastodon great, John Conchar. You're watching Purdue Fort Wayne basketball on the Learfield IMG College Network. The Acme Bar and Grill, where neighbors meet. A Fort Wayne tradition since 1941. We feature nightly dinner specials along with our iconic pizza, wings, and pork tenderloins and barbecue in our family-friendly atmosphere with a retro flair. Additionally, we offer a full bar with 26 beers on tap from various Midwest breweries. We also have an area perfect for private events such as meetings, reunions, and banquets that holds up to 50 people. The Acme Bar and Grill, located in the heart of East State Village, where neighbors meet. Dream of getting cash back in your pocket with every purchase you make? With a Visa Rewards credit card from Fort Financial, you can earn 1% back on everything you buy and a low introductory rate of just 3.9% APR with no annual fees or balance transfer fees so you can consolidate debt. You even get online access to view transactions or pay bills. Stop by your local branch or fortfinancialce.org today. Fort Financial, it's time to live your dreams. This little pumpkin's BB. She's my baby, and that's why I'm here. All right, looking for something pooch friendly? Yes, I want pumpkin here to feel safe and snuggly when I want to feel rugged. Well, we got plenty of Jeeps, uh, Durangos, plenty of room for the dog in the back. How many will fit comfortably? Uh, seven or eight adults. How many dogs? Oh, 11, 12. Shotgun BB. 13. Glenbrook Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. We've been fetching deals since 1979. Drive a Scat Pack Dodge Charger over 10,000 off MSRP with Dodge Power Dollars at Glenbrook Dodge. Oh, she got a little too excited. I'll get a towel. Purdue Fort Wayne basketball. Buy your tickets now. The Acme Bar and Grill, where neighbors meet. A Fort Wayne tradition since 1941. We feature nightly dinner specials along with our iconic pizza, wings, and pork tenderloins and barbecue in our family-friendly atmosphere with a retro flair. Additionally, we offer a full bar with 26 beers on tap from various Midwest breweries. We also have an area perfect for private events such as meetings, reunions, and banquets that holds up to 50 people. The Acme Bar and Grill, located in the heart of East State Village, where neighbors meet. Uh, Purdue Fort Wayne basketball buy your tickets now John had an exciting offseason uh, kind of following your progression with uh, with the NBA and, uh, and and the process you went through learning experience for me but uh, just really exciting I know our fan base really enjoyed it and appreciate you stopping by on your way back to Chicago from Memphis and uh, and sharing with us a little bit of your uh, your spring and summer experience and yeah. you've been uh, you've helped us build our brand for five years and you continued it this summer and uh, looking forward to following you this uh, this year with the Memphis Grizzlies only the second player in my 20 year career that's been invited to uh, to Portsmouth. You know, I didn't really know what I was going to get I get into with it all because no one I never talked to anybody or anything with it. So, I mean, I just kind of went there and tried to play my brand of basketball and it just kind of went up and down and it was just a lot of sh shots with no passing or anything. So, yeah, it's I mean, a challenge. Just, yeah, it was it a challenge, challenge that I had to kind of get a around so I just tried doing a lot of little things defense rebound uh, just try to make the right pass but I just didn't shoot as much so talk to me a little bit about um, sort of your transition you were in grad school this year 
So it was really great that, that you were able to take your online classes and go out to LA with your, uh, with your agent and, and trainers. Talk about that setup you had in, in Los Angeles. Yeah, so I left um, mid to end April and I, yeah, I still had school left, but I, it was all online, so it worked out. Um, I went to Thousand Oaks, California. Um, I was in a two bedroom, two bath with Romeo Langford, which was really cool. Um, the place that we worked at was Mama Sports Academy. It's a really neat place. It's got five beautiful courts, two like volleyball courts. There's a gym in, or the weight room inside it and everything. So it was super nice. Um, they, they took care of you really well. Um, I got, Talk about some of the resources that they had there and maybe see your trainer and nutritionist, some of the things that you did. Um, I forgot what it was called, but we had the nutritionist and we had the meals come in. Um, there's a snack bar that you get smoothies all the time afterwards. Uh, you did like the Norma Techs. They had like their own room for that, like right when you walked into the left, which they was really cool. Machines no, <laughs> I think it's called a Norma Tech. <laughs> um, but yeah, just that. Uh, I had my first ever massage there. It was actually really cool. Uh, and you were living with uh, with Roma, who also signed with uh, with Happy Walters, your agent. Um, so, and I know he wasn't always there at the same time as you guys worked out different places, but go through kind of a, a typical day that you two would get up and, and, and what it would look like as you trained for, uh, for some of the combine stuff. Um, so we'd wake up around 7.30. Uh, we'd eat some breakfast or something. I think we'd get there. We'd get there at like 8.30. Um, start at nine, or we, yeah, we, yeah, we start at nine. We, they, they were big on stretching. So we'd stretch for like 30 minutes, 20, 30 minutes, and then get on the court and do an hour workout, hour and a half. Uh, and then you, you say work out more skill basketball, work, basketball, yeah, basketball shots, skill. Stuff yeah. Like that. Okay. Skill work basketball wise. And then we got like a 30 to 45 minute break for lunch. And then we did a weight session for about an hour. Like we stretched again and then had, had our weight session and then the rest of the day was to ours really and then usually we came back with our trainer and ended up shooting around like four or five so you and get then, two basketball workouts so yeah more shots and more shots in the second one yeah the second one. yeah okay. what did your trainer coming in prior to meeting with all the workouts what did they identify as some areas that they wanted to work on your game um just adjusting to the three-point line so it was a lot of threes because that's big in the game now um and the floaters because there's a lot more athletes, so I'm not just gonna go up and just lay it in. Um, yeah, I got, had to work on a lot of floaters, so okay. that was the two big things. Go through some of the extreme travel that you had in that. Um, I flew LA to Brooklyn, and then Brooklyn back. That was about a six hour flight, both and ways. back to back workouts, correct? Or uh, I had a day off with, on that one. Atlanta. And then I flew to Atlanta from LA, and I, right after that, I flew to Toronto, and that was a back to back. And then I flew to Boston on, for that next day and I'd work out that Thursday. Talk about uh, what, what the typical workout once you arrive, what that looks like. Uh, so you arrive the night before usually, um, and you kind of just relax in the hotel. And then the morning of, they or they give you a schedule when you land, like there's someone of the team picks you up and they, it's usually, it starts at like 8 a.m. with uh, like the vertical jump, like all the combine testing for about an hour and a half. And then you do, a workout which you'll do start shooting and then you'll do a one-on-one -on -one and three-on-three -three. it just depends how many games you play like it varies team to team was there a wow moment as you went through these individual workouts like uh, maybe somebody particular in the NBA or a player you saw or, or facility you know what was there any sort of moment that you had um, the first one I had Jerry West talk to me which was really cool um, he talked to me for like 10-15 minutes after the workout and just talked to me about my game and how like how I could improve it during the Celtics workout. We worked up Brian Scalabrini because we played five on five on that one, which was yeah. different. And Brian Scalabrini played with us, and I thought it was sweet because he played on the Bulls. And yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. Oh, with your right. Chicago type. That, yeah. that is cool. That was awesome. Was there a, a highlight during this uh, summer league that you know I talked about? Kind of that that wow moment as you were going through the uh, the workouts. What about in in summer league? Just winning it, you know. Yeah. It was so cool. Got a shirt out of it. <laughs> it was sweet. T-shirt. T-shirt. Yeah. I like your T-shirt. Yeah, yeah. That's good. It says summer champs, summer league <laughs> champs or something. Yeah, that's great. Great T-shirt. Was there a moment that you're like, man, I, 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 I fit here. I mean, statistically, it was very clear watching it. After the Pacers game, I guess like I played really well, def good defense. Yeah. So I kind of felt like, oh, if I can do this and add like a consistent three-point shot, mm -hmm. like I feel like I can stay around the league for a little bit.
How was the adjustment actually sitting on the bench a little bit? I mean, it was fine. Um, yeah, it was nice getting rest. But I mean, <laughs> it's been four years since you've sat on the bench yeah. at all. Ever yeah, with yeah. Um, yeah. Like I know that's going to be a big difference because I won't get as much playing time wherever I am, or as much as I did in college. So uh, I have to get used to that. But it was, I took it fine. I mean, I cheered my teammates on. It was fun to watch them. Did you make uh, any kind of uh, guys that you kind of connected with in particular, or really enjoyed playing with? Um, anything kind mm -hmm. of out, outside the ordinary? Good stories. Um, I mean, not really. Everyone was kind of like a good guy on the team. Um, I went to a rookie transition with Brian Clark, so we were together for four straight days and we kind of talked a lot and became pretty good friends there. So rookie transition, talk about that. That was in New York City. Describe what, what, what that is and, and kind of your experience there. Uh, it's four days long. You sit there around, it was about 12 hours a day. Uh, then the last day is about eight, but uh, they kind of just teach you about like the everyday life and rookies. Um, just like they talk about your financials, they talk about like the drug policy, like any any policy that you can get kind of busted for, anything you can get in trouble for. You, like, you got coached by by Taylor Jenkins, the new the new coach for the Memphis Grizzlies, and not every NBA team had their actual NBA coach coach him. So kind of unique situation. Share with me your your experience with uh, with Coach Jenkins. Having him teach me everything, like for through the offenses, and just throughout the team, it was really cool having him as the head coach for their summer league. I think it just helped us, like, because the younger guys are still a part of the Grizzlies as well. So, I thought it was really good, just getting to know him too, um, just throughout the what, 20 days we were out uh, there. Why didn't you choose number 55 uh, with the Grizzlies? Uh, someone who's had it. Joe Kim Noah has it, and he's still on the roster. I think. So. so if that frees up, are you going to go to 55? No, I'm just going to stay 46. That's going to be your, your, your NBA number. Yeah, so why did you choose 46? Um, not, I don't know. I kind of just picked a random number. Uh, I got a text from the equipment manager saying, like, you can't get these numbers, and there's a decent amount of numbers you can get, which makes sense. So, uh, yeah, I just kind of picked 46 out of nowhere. Going into this year, what are some goals? What does success look like for you? Uh, I mean, personally, I guess just improving every aspect of my game, just learning how to score better and score in different a variety of ways, like just using my floaters and shooting a good percentage from three. Describe kind of your recruit. Well, back at the Coliseum, former Indiana Tech head coach Jeff Parrish and Kent Horman in for John Nolan. As we take a look at the halftime stats, Jeff, all Purdue Fort Wayne. Everything there is positive for the Purdue Fort Wayne Mastodons. You see that 11 points there for the Judson Eagles. Possibly an all time record low for an opponent scoring against the Mastodons. Well, we got to note fewest points allowed in a half since 11 versus Judson back on November 20th of 2012. So. Yeah, Judson only shooting 17.4% to the Don's 40.6. The Don's much improved from three-point land versus what happened last Saturday at Illinois Chicago. Neither team got to the free throw line that much, just six shots, two out of six for Judson, four for six for the Don's. Judson amazingly out-rebounded Fort Wayne 21 to 19. Nine assists for Purdue Fort Wayne and a donut for Judson. And then you see the big disparaging uh, disparity in turnovers, 15 for Judson, just six for the Dons. And that was a big story of the first half as well. 15 turnovers, you know, that's on pace. I don't know if I've seen a college basketball team ever turn it over 30 times. That might be worth just sticking around to see. But for the Mastodons, Coach Kaufman, he wants to clean up a lot of things that he didn't like last Saturday at Illinois Chicago. And this second half will be a good opportunity to get everybody some minutes, get them in the game, get them fresh, get them ready to go, get them motivated for the big weekend coming up when they finish out this month at IUPUI and Iowa State. Because there's nothing more important, I think, on Coach Kaufman's agenda to get this team ready for that final run in the Summit League. And a 16-game schedule in the Summit League with a total of nine teams. This, of course, is Purdue Fort Wayne's final year in the Summit League. Next year, they will begin play in the Horizon League, and it's interesting because 
their longest trip in the Horizon League will be a six-hour drive to Green Bay, and presently in the Summit League, that's their shortest trip when they go to Western Illinois. We're underway here in the second half. Jeff Parrish, Kent Horman, glad you could join us tonight. So Judson will at least try to find some positives and figure out a way to score some points here in the second half. Flynn, a little hop step, fade away off the front of the rim, skying for the board, and then saving it as Godfrey takes the return pass that time from Holba. Godfrey with speed, kicks it into the corner. Dons are just content to have everybody get a touch and work the ball around. D. Berry to Godfrey, entry pass down low underneath is Carl. He kicks it out, three on the way, good! That time, Demir Black, who got the start tonight in favor of the injured Brian Patrick, gets the Dons off to a flying start in the second half with a three ball. Demir hasn't shot too many threes this year. Tonight, made two already out of uh, four now. Uh, doing a good job filling in for Brian Patrick. Whistle on the play. Judson will retain possession. Demarcus Williams will trigger the inbound. Takes a look, dashing over, and the catch and shoot, and knocking down the jumper, Jordan Johnson. So a positive start, at least for Judson, because they went quite a little bit of time in the first half before getting its first field goal. They ring it around the perimeter. Now Black, little stutter step that time by Godfrey. And that floater, I believe, was deflected. A little hand on it that time, knocked it down. Back the other way, Demarcus Williams. Another three on the way, and that's off the front of the iron. Tipping the ball away that time was Holba, and here come the Dons back the other way. Godfrey pulls up over to DeBerry. Back up high to Black. Driving is Godfrey. Good kick out pass that time, but the shot is off the mark by DeBerry. And the Dons commit a personal foul as Dylan Carl, a little over the top, trying to get the rebound. Dylan, he's just got to let, let him have that ball and start heading back on defense. No way he's going to get that ball away from him. Demarcus Williams, the freshman out of Chicago, tries to penetrate left. Now comes right. That's tipped away by Godfrey. Now there's a long jumper on the way. A three ball, and that's knocked down by Demarcus Williams. So points were at a premium in the first half for Judson. They only scored 11, but they already have five here in the second half. Demir Black with a good drive back the other way. Kind of caught the Judson defense, I think, napping a bit. Took advantage of that opening. Straight line drive to the basket. Use that left hand. Good job by Demir. Jordan Johnson over to Johnny Flynn. Now trying to penetrate the baseline. Kicked out down the middle, and Prohaska takes the good pass from Darius Jones. So Prohaska gets a bucket. 42 to 18. Gottfried, entry pass. That time just a little turnaround. Carl with the basket and he draws the foul. Looks like John Kaufman will go back to his bench. So Carl with a chance for the traditional three-point play. It's a good move by Dylan. I like to see that. He needs a lot of work with his back to the basket, drop step, jump hooks, things like that. That was a good move right there with the little drop step and a uh, little short jumper. Free throw is off the mark and Rebound is corralled by Prohaska, so here comes Judson back the other way. Prohaska thinks about the shot from the elbow. Almost has the ball intercepted, but Williams able to get the handle on it. Jordan Johnson with a long jumper. That's off the iron. Ball's on the floor, and the Dons come away with it as Deontay Billups crosses center court. Has the ball poked away that time briefly by Jones, but he runs it down. Black saves it right near the center court line. Godfrey dishes over. Billups with a drive, hop step, puts up the jumper, draws the foul. So good penetration by Deontay Billups, getting his defender off his feet and drawing the personal. And the whole key to that, he kept his balance. He came to a nice jump stop, kept his balance, ball faked, got his defender out of position and got the foul.
Deontay Billups, the 6'4 freshman out of Moline, misses the free throw. Billups for the season is a 70% free thrower. And he hits that one, so he gets one out of two. Don's now up 45 to 18 as we hit the 16 and a half minute mark of the second half. Marcus Williams picked up by Demir Black. Flynn to Prohaska. He gives up his dribble. Flynn trying to set a screen. There's a big jumper on the way by Demarcus Williams, and he draws the personal foul. That'll be on Demir Black and his first personal. We'll send Demarcus Williams to the line. Williams is the leading scorer for Judson at 17 a game. And he uses the entire rim to drop that down. He is virtually an 80% free thrower. There you see the replay of the foul. Got two Macedons going after the ball that time. Demir got caught hitting him on the hands. Both free throws for Williams. He now has five to lead Judson. Demir Black working left. Now comes up top. Godfrey will pull it out. On the weave to Billups. Now to Deberry. Comes off the Bedford screen. Almost an interception, but Godfrey has it. Tries to penetrate in the low block. Flips it across to Billups. Billups has some space. Baseline tries to take it to the rack, but draws the personal foul. You There's saw that little scene, Jeff. That athletic ability right there. Hard baseline drive. Deontay and we are at the under, of anything. We're at the under 16 timeout. So we'll take a break. The Mastodons on top of Judson 45 to 20. This is Purdue Fort Wayne basketball on the Learfield IMG College Network. This little pumpkin's BB. She's my baby, and that's why I'm here. All right, looking for something pooch friendly? Yes, I want pumpkin here to feel safe and snuggly when I want to feel rugged. Well, we got plenty of Jeeps, uh, Durangos, plenty of room for the dog in the back. How many will fit comfortably? Uh, seven or eight adults. How many dogs? Oh, 11, 12. Shotgun, BB. 13. Glenbrook Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. We've been fetching deals since 1979. Drive a Scat Pack Dodge Charger over 10,000 off MSRP with Dodge Power Dollars at Glenbrook Dodge. Oh, she got a little too excited. I'll get a towel. My philosophy has always been, what would I do if this was my mother? You have the blessing from God to know that you're serving in a capacity that you truly love. This isn't a job to me. They're coming to us at their most vulnerable. They're coming to us at a time when they're dealing with something totally unexpected. And when you see people go through that every day, it kind of gives you uh, motivation to be your best. We have some of the best clinical staff that I have ever worked with in my 20 some years of healthcare. Well, back at the Coliseum, here's a look at the men's basketball preseason coaches poll. North Dakota State favored, followed by South Dakota, Oral Roberts, Omaha, South Dakota State, then the Mastodons, Western Illinois, so the Mastodons picked sixth out of the nine-team league. Right off the bat, they're going to play one of the heavies, South Dakota. Yep. First game, January 1st at the Gate Center. The 3 p.m. tip-off as Billups hits the free throw. Out of the eight home games this year, Kent, four of them are at the Gate Center in the Summit League. So I think that's a little bit of an advantage. And Billups cashes in both free throws. You saw the replay about he really went to the rack along the baseline. And if he wasn't going to get the dunk, he was clearly going to draw the personal. He did, and he hit both free throws. 47-20, Fort Wayne. Open jumper misses everything that time. Jordan Johnson took about a 14-footer and only shot at 13 feet. Well, one of the things I've been impressed with, Jeff, is even though this was an expected, you hate to say easy game for Purdue-Fort Wayne, but it's been easy so far, 
they have played very hard, especially defensively. So you can tell that Coach Kaufman and his staff wanted to use this game as a, as a primer for the following game this Saturday against IUPUI and then the one on the road at Iowa State. Exactly. They, I'm sure, had a lot of talk about after that Illinois-Chicago game. And um, they wanted to get right back at it here tonight. And they wanted to clean up a lot of things that they didn't like on Saturday's game. Good kick-out pass from Binford to DeBerry. And he hits the triple. So the Dons have 50 points already with just under 15 minutes to go. Jordan Johnson tries to penetrate. That's rejected by Benford, and here come the Dons the other way. So they'll try to turn defense into offense. Billups into the corner as Tion Rollins will spin, try to swim underneath. That just rolls around the back plate and then dribbles off. Good move by Rollins, but he just couldn't get the ball to fall. Now Flynn. Tries to get a step, that's intercepted. Here's Godfrey, big two-handed flush. Right there, Jared did a good job of getting on that passing lane that time, got the tip out, and the easy one. Godfrey in double digits now with 10 points. He's working on a double-double with 10 points and nine rebounds. Prohaska to Flynn. Over to Jordan Johnson on the right wing, comes across to Demarcus Williams, now left side. There's a jumper on the way. That was a three ball that I believe was tipped by Deshaun Patterson. And now Godfrey back the other way, comes off the Benford screen. Tries to knife down the lane, kicks it back out, and a little stutter step and a travel that time by Marcus DeBerry. 52 to 20 in favor of the Dons, 13-44 to go in the contest. Demarcus Williams methodically bringing the ball up court. Picked up by Rollins. And yet another turnover gives the ball right back to Fort Wayne. It has been a relatively foul-free game. Each team was called for six personals in the first half. One of the things I've noticed, this officiating crew has really let both sides play. Three on the way by D. Berry, that rims out. Rebound is controlled by Jordan Johnson. He leads the rush back down and draws a foul on Benford, who couldn't put the brakes on and just <laughs> crawled right over the top of his back. I think that's something even more impressive, Kent. Mastodon's only six turnovers here tonight. Yeah. So they've taken care of, good care of the basketball. Six turnovers, 11, 12 assists so far. So they're doing a good job moving the ball, taking care of the basketball. And I don't care what level, and you've played at all levels. You've played at high school and college and, and coached. Turnovers have to be the ones that are really the keys to the game. You always want to win the turnover battle. Demarcus Williams shifts gears and draws a personal foul. Well, I know more than said it. Now all of a sudden the fouls are kind of picking up yeah, a little bit. Say, I was going to pinch you there. We don't need them to start blowing their whistles now. Marcus Williams back at the free throw line. Again, almost an 80% free thrower, the leading scorer at 17 points a game for Judson. Good looking little player, just a 5'10 freshman out of Chicago. And again, if you're just joining us, Judson is located in Elgin, Illinois. Williams hits both as we Roll down to the 13 minute mark. It's still a 30 point Mastodon lead, 52 to 22. Godfrey kicks it back out. Holba loads it up. That's off the front of the rim and right into the hands of Demarcus Williams. Williams' little bounce pass down low. That's kicked back out to Jordan Johnson. Now Johnson pulls up from 16, hits the front of the rim. They battle for the tip. Good job that time by Tashawn Patterson to slice through some Mastodons and tip that home. So Judson trying to start feeling a little bit better about itself. Holba down low, and as Nkumsa goes up, he draws the personal foul. So Savage will pick up that personal, and that will send Nkumsa back to the stripe. 
because he adjusts the old pants. Probably the most minutes Josh has gotten all season long here tonight. Giving the coaches a little taste what it would be like to give him a few more minutes here and there. Missed the first, and I'm noticing that four of the five Dons on the floor right now have these really bright yellow shoes on as the second free throw is off the mark. Darius Jones spins, comes cross court. Patterson tries to spin baseline, reverses his field, reverse layup. That's a little too strong. Dons come away with it, and that time, Rollins is fouled. Looks like that'll go on to Sean Patterson. Five fouls on Judson, four on the Don so far this half. Jared Godfrey, little hop step, puts the tough shot up, and it won't go, but he does draw the personal. So Cedric Payne picks up his first personal. Right there, you can see the versatility of Jared Godfrey, able to get to the basket. We've seen him shoot threes from the perimeter. He can defend, take it the distance. Godfrey, a 74% free thrower. In and out. We have seen an awful lot of shots tonight, be they free throws or jump shots, that look like they go about three-fourths of the way down and it just all of a sudden pops out. He gets that free throw. 53-24, we're under 12 to go in the basketball game here at the Coliseum. Deep three from the far corners off the mark by Demarcus Williams and hoisting down the rebound is Nkumsa. Now here come the Dons, comes cross court. Holba takes it right to the rim. His lay-in is a little too strong off the glass. Dons do get the rebound that time. The shot is blocked by Savage. And back the other way comes Cedric Payne. Now trying to drive baseline is Williams. Underneath, no. Well, the physicality picking up just a little bit. Now racing down the other end, and Kumsa kicks it out. Godfrey, three off the front of the rim, and Kumsa tips it out again. Spinning around with the ball is Billups. Players crashing heavily to the floor. Phillips tries to take it up for the jam and draws the personal foul. So before we shoot free throws, we'll be going to the under 12 timeout with the Mastodons leading Judson 53 to 24. And as we go to break, let's take a look at that Jared Godfrey interception and dunk as Godfrey has had himself a tremendous basketball game. All by himself for the two-handed flush 53-24 Mastodons, you are watching Purdue-Fort Wayne basketball on the Learfield IMG College Network. Now that's eating good in the neighborhood. Dreaming of getting cash back in your pocket with every purchase you make? With a Visa Rewards credit card from Fort Financial, you can earn 1% back on everything you buy. And a low introductory rate of just 3.9% APR. With no annual fees or balance transfer fees. So you can consolidate debt. You even get online access to view transactions or pay bills. Stop by your local branch or fortfinancialcu.org today. Fort Financial. It's time to live your dreams. Now back at the Coliseum, former Indiana Tech head coach Jeff Parrish, Kent Horman tonight here for John Nolan. And don't forget, Seats for Soldiers. That'll be Saturday, January 18th, the 1 p.m. tip-off here at the Coliseum when the Dons host Oral Roberts University. Seats for Soldiers. I am the son of a military veteran. My father flew 41 combat sorties, primarily escorting B-17s in World War II in Europe, retired a Brigadier General in the Air Force. Really proud of my late papa. Something that you 
are extremely proud of. I've heard you talk about that many, yep. many times, and uh, I'm sure you have fond, fond memories of your father and his accomplishments. Well, Billups misses a pair of free throws. Yeah, the Coliseum means a lot to me, Jeff, because that F-84 jet that's on that pedestal out there, my father actually had seat time in that aircraft. So the Seat for Soldiers program, a great thing by Purdue-Fort Wayne. That shot is off the mark that time by Keyshawn Patterson. Here comes Demir Black. Kicks it back out. Holba over into the corner. And a three ball on the way is off the mark that time by Tion Rollins. And racing the other way and driving for the lay-in, but having it blocked, Cedric Payne. Big block that time by the Dons. And they'll come away with the basketball. Here comes Demir Black. And the Dons playing great defense. Holba, his three balls off the mark. Carl battling for the rebound, puts it up, draws the personal. Right there, Dylan, just grab that ball, take it straight back up and dunk. He got the rebound, kind of looked out like he wanted to pass it out. He needs to be a little selfish right there and just put it down and flush it. Carl goes to the free throw line. He is a 63% free thrower. As a team, the Dons shoot 69%, and that's off the front of the iron. Matt Holba leading the Dons with 13 points. Billups has 10. Jared Godfrey also is in double digits. And that free throw is off the rim, but Holba Retrieves the rebound, and the Dons with another offensive opportunity. Holba with the drive, left hand, and he lays it in. Soft touch that time by Holba. Prior trip, he banked it off the glass a little too sharply, but that time, much softer touch to get the deuce. Had good body control that time, Kent. Able to switch hands and off the glass. Well, that shot off the mark, and here come the Dons. Jared Godfrey, Demir Black, his shot is off the mark. That was a triple attempt coming away as Darius Jones. Jones is running the floor, dishes off, good pass that time. The lay-in missed by Tishon Patterson, but Prohaska follows with the jam, making it 55 to 26. Godfrey tight ropes the baseline. Deberry gives up the three, gives it back to Godfrey, and Godfrey Look like he maybe stepped on the sideline. There you see the head coach, John Kaufman, still encouraging his team, even though they have the substantial lead of 55 to 26. He wants them to play hard this final nine minutes. Hard and smart. Keep the turnovers down. Good straight up defense. Rebound, check out, pressure the ball. Darius Jones tries for the entry pass to Prohaska. He's doubled. Now they get it down low. Payne spins off the glass, and he gets it to fall. You can see Demir Black was a little frustrated as he kind of bit into that move, and a good spin move that time by Cedric Payne for the bucket. Demir kind of shook him off after the ball went through the hoop. D. Berry has the ball stripped out of his hand as he tried to drive to the rim. And here comes Cedric Payne, all five foot nine inches of him. Three from the corner. Oh, they're going to say he had a foot on the line. That was a two by Darius Jones. And a quick 30 second timeout is called by Brian Thrift. So a little bit of a push being made here by Judson. Again, they only scored 11 points in the first half. So they've got 19 total here in the second half. Our game reset, 8.24 to go, 55 to 30. The Mastodons on top of Judson. Judson, they've calmed down tremendously since the first half. They're just playing freelance. They're a lot more confident, more comfortable with the surroundings. Shots are dropping for them now. Well, there you see New Year's afternoon. That'll be the Mastodons. Summit League opener, their final season in the Summit League when they take on South Dakota. And that will be a 3 p.m. tip at the Hilliard Gates Sports Center. And again, you'll be able to see that game right here on the Learfield IMG College Network. 
South Dakota is a good, good basketball team. Well, I really think coming away from this game having a positive feeling by playing good offense, good defense, and taking care of business, I think those last two road games of the 2019 portion of the schedule, Jeff, are going to be key when the Dons go to IUPUI, which pick a league that has always been an intense rivalry, and then that trip to Iowa State. So if that won't toughen them up for that conference home opener New Year's afternoon, I don't think anything will. One good thing about it, after that Iowa State game, they almost have a whole week to prepare for the South Dakota game. So if things don't go well out at Iowa State, uh, they can forget about it. They got plenty of practice days ahead of them going into the Summit League. But two great tune-ups, I think, heading into the Summit League. Now Holba, Don's doing a little bit of a weave. Godfrey briefly loses the handle. Now Demir Black comes out to Godfrey. They're making sure all five white jerseys touch the basketball. Almost an interception. Demir Black from the wing. That's off the rim, but the long rebound is corralled that time by Deberry. Godfrey for three. That's off the rim, the high tip. Oh, and that time Holba thought he had it, and he also thought somebody banged him on the back of the head. But on they play. Here comes Cedric Payne. Tries to get the entry pass down to Prohaska. That cross-court pass intercepted, tipped by Holba. Here comes Godfrey. Comes across to Deberry. Little drop step, and he throws a floater off the glass and banks at home. Good play that time by Marcus Deberry. Seven and a half left, 57 to 30 in favor of the Dons. Now Cedric Payne works to his right. Comes left to Malik White, so he's a new entry into the lineup for Judson. Prohaska tries to drive, just kind of throws up a bit of an errant shot. That's off the mark, and Dylan Carl has the rebound for the Dons. Demir Black almost has it poked away by Prohaska. That shot was way off the mark, but into the hands of Carl, who just jams it through. Well, almost like a pass. <laughs> Had no problem getting up and getting that one down. No. So Darius Jones almost has it poked away. Manages to regain the handle on the dribble. Prohaska just puts the ball right into the chest that time of Carl and a bit of a rugby scrum on the floor. So they'll tie that one up. So we are under eight, and we have another timeout here at the Memorial Coliseum. The Mastodons leading Judson by the score of 59 to 30. You are watching Purdue Fort Wayne basketball on the Learfield IMG College Network. The Acme Bar and Grill, where neighbors meet. A Fort Wayne tradition since 1941. We feature nightly dinner specials along with our iconic pizza, wings, and pork tenderloins and barbecue in our family-friendly atmosphere with a retro flair. Additionally, we offer a full bar with 26 beers on tap from various Midwest breweries. We also have an area perfect for private events such as meetings, reunions, and banquets that holds up to 50 people. The Acme Bar and Grill, located in the heart of East State Village, where neighbors meet. This is a place where compassion lives. Strength does too. Experience, innovation, and an unwavering commitment to caring for hearts of all ages. This is Lutheran Heart Center, where an elite team of professionals comes together to work as one. From preventive screenings to complex procedures, advanced and comprehensive heart care lives here. Well, there you take a look at what was our halftime entertainment, a large group of young cheerleaders. And speaking of young, well, youth basketball night is Saturday, January 11th, the 7 o'clock tip-off between Purdue Fort Wayne and the South Dakota State Jackrabbits. $5 tickets for all youth basketball players, coaches, and friends. To purchase tickets, call Brittany McLaughlin. and she can take care of all of your ticket needs. So the Dons are again substituting liberally as we are just over six and a half minutes left in the contest. Demir Black who got the start tonight for the injured Brian Patrick has played very well 
Now Black on the wing, kicks it up high to Deberry. Billups starts to his right, picks up his dribble, flips it back out to Tion Rollins. Now here's Deberry. Spinning, looking for somebody, has the ball poked away. Shot clock is an issue, and that shot that time by Incomso was tipped. So the Dons really don't get a quality shot off. And back the other way, a quick shot is hoisted up by Judson. That was way off the mark that time by Darius Jones. So Purdue Fort Wayne with the ball. Under six to go. Black kicks it into the corner. That's a three on the way off the front of the rim that time by Rollins. Cedric Payne comes away with the ball for the Eagles. On the left wing, comes up top. That time Malik White was thinking about the triple. Now a long kickout pass. Payne puts up the jumper. That's off the mark. They battle for the board. An eagle is on the floor. Let's see who the personal is on. Josh Inkumsa picks up the personal. You know, talk about Jameer Black stepping in in the starting role tonight, Kent, for Brian Patrick. Done a great job. Zero turnovers out of the point guard tonight. Oh, that's excellent. Zero turnovers out of Demir. He's handled the ball, just distributed the ball. Um, three for seven from the field. So he's done a good, good job coming off the bench tonight, filling in. Malik White is cut off at the baseline, double team. There's a long jumper that is way off the mark that time by Randy McRoberts, who just entered the lineup. So that will give the ball back to the Mastodons. And here comes Demir Black. Well, if you are perhaps just joining us or if you missed the Glenbrook Dodge pregame show, that was an issue as Black spins, misses, kick out pass, goes over to the corner. Here's Black's second chance. This time he draws the personal. But we talked about it in the Glenbrook Dodge pregame show that Brian Patrick Second leading scorer of the Dons had an upper leg injury at the Illinois Chicago game last Saturday when we were told that there was a chance maybe he could go. He did warm up, but if not, Black would get the start. And as it turns out, Patrick is not playing tonight. And as Jeff, you pointed out, Demir Black has really got the job done as he rolls in the first charity toss. Controls the game, does a nice job. What happens when he's in the game, Kent, that moves Jared Godfrey over to the wing position. Maybe Jared's more natural position is at the wing rather than point guard, but that gives uh, uh, Jared a chance to get out and run the court a little bit and be the receiver on some of those Demir Black assists. Well, Black has 10 points as he nailed both free throws. And that is an interception by the Dons, racing back the other way, going for the jam that time. Boy, everybody was on their feet as Ryland Grundy was ready to just jam that down with authority, but instead draws the personal foul, but the entire Mastodon bench was on its feet, wanting a little showtime. He rose above a little bit too hard that time off the back of the rim. Grundy, a 6'5 sophomore out of South Bend, went to Riley. He was yeah. coached in high school by an old Fort Wayne name from the old Bishop Dwanger days, Mark Johnson. Oh, yeah. There you see him trying to jam that down, but just couldn't get it to go, but draws the personal. So he'll see if he can collect the second free throw. And he does. 62-30 Dons, 444 left in the contest. Adrian Gutierrez tries to spin down the lane. Little bounce pass underneath. That's intercepted by Billups. And here come the Dons back the other way. Bedford thought about it. Leaves for Billups. So the Dons will work the ball a little bit. Grundy kicks it back out. There's a long jumper on the way. That's in and out that time by Rollins. But Purdue Fort Wing gets the rebound. Now Billups on the left wing. He'll put up the long jumper. That's off the mark. And coming away with the basketball is Malik White as we are under four minutes to go. White has his pocket picked again, and here come the Dons back the other way. 
Black with the steal and the lay-in, so great play at both ends. Black first with the steal on defense, then he takes it for the lay-in on offense. Black now has a dozen points. I think Demir Black probably the best on-ball defended defender that the Mastodons have. Well, and the Dons keep coming away with the ball, like getting a little helter-skelter here. Ball is on the floor, but racing back to grab it is Cameron Benford. And some great hustle by Judson to try to steal the ball. Now the Dons could have some numbers back the other way. But Black will just slow it down as we approach the three-minute mark. Benford wants to try to join the three-point parade, and that was a little bit out of his range. Grundy tried to save it, but into the hands of an eagle. And here's McRoberts. That might find Cameron a seat on the bench, that shot. And that time, Keon Rollins. And we are at the under four timeout, so just two minutes and 49 seconds left to go in the game. It's the Mastodon 64, Judson 30. You are watching Purdue-Fort Wayne basketball on the Learfield IMG College Network. Growing up in the Midwest, I learned a lot from my dad, like how to fix a bike and balance a budget. And when it comes to money, dad always said, you need a partner you can trust. I want to teach my kids the same thing. That's why we're members of Midwest America. They're a local credit union with honest personal service and have all the tools my family needs, like checking accounts, mortgages and auto loans, and mobile banking to manage it all. Midwest America Federal Credit Union, a local partner you can trust. This is where ambition meets action. Where you can experience everything and become anything. So ask yourself, what are you going to be? A business leader. An artist. A scientist. A difference maker. A game changer. This is an education with purpose. We are Purdue University Fort Wayne. Well, tonight's Connors Kitchen champion of the game, Purdue Fort Wayne's Matt Holba. So congratulations to Matt for being tonight's Connors Kitchen champion of the game. Stop in after the game and try one of their delicious appetizers. A big night for Matt Holba, Jeff. 15 big points where he got shut out Saturday at Illinois Chicago. So he needed a comeback game here tonight. Get his confidence back rolling. I've noticed on several occasions but that three ball's not dropping for him. He drops his head. So, uh, you know, not feeling good about himself tonight. A good good feel for himself. 15 big points, uh, 5 for 12 shooting, and 2 for 6 from the three-point line. Tion Rollins gets the friendly roll. That will swell the lead to 65-30 for Purdue Fort Wayne. And he hits them both. Ty Beatty, a 6'3 freshman from Chicago, getting a little bit of playing time here at mop-up time. Uh, McRoberts comes up high to Alan Schiller. He is out of Israel. And that pass is intercepted right down the lane. Matt Havey has it for the Dons ahead. Kick back out. Now Havey has it, little drop step, tries for the lay-in and can't get it to fall, but he'll draw the personal. So Havey, the redshirt freshman out of Lansing, will go to the free throw line. And he misses that free throw. First attempt of the year for Matt at the free throw line. Dons have not exactly shot lights out from the free throw line tonight, and that kind of adds to it as Havy misses both. Now Beatty, as we approach the two-minute mark left in the contest, Beatty tries to drive. That's blocked out of there by Nkumsa. Here come the Dons. Phillips comes across. Beatty loads it up. No, he misses everything. And McRoberts has the board for the Eagles. Right there, that shot right there, Kent. That was the 37th three for the night for the Mastodons. Wow, that is a lot. They've taken bets for 40. Now Gutierrez has 
Ball poked out of his hand that time, and he was the last to touch it, so that'll be Purdue-Fort Wayne basketball. So we now have 100 seconds left in the ball game, 66-30, Purdue-Fort Wayne. Deion Robbins tries to drive, but that's tipped out. Don's retained possession. Rollins will trigger the inbound. Gives it to Nkumsa, takes the return pass. Now comes across. Beatty, a little hop step, tries to put the shot up, doesn't get it to fall. Nkumsa battling for the board on the other side. It's on the floor, and Judson come away with it. Now here comes Ty Beatty. Beatty snaps the pass through a lot of traffic, driving, putting the tough shot up underneath. That time was Joseph Jackson, Jr. No dice there, and here come the Mastodons as we are approaching the final minute of the game. Billups in Kumsa. Well, Beatty will give it another try. This time he's got it. He's got the triple. Matt Havey with first, the three ball. It's his first basket of the season right there. Big three-pointer for Matt. And the fans love it here at the Coliseum. Beatty answers with a three of his own. So it was Haiti versus Beatty. Down to the final 44. 69-33. 38-3s. 38 three-pointers. I'm taking bets for 40. Well, <laughs> there comes 39, and that's a little too strong that time by Havey. Well, down to the final 28. See if the Dons are able to get one more trip. Baseline, and it looked like that time. Schiller stepped on the baseline, so the Dons will get one more trip. You don't think they'll put up another three. Uh, Coach Kaufman just gave him the word, no more shots, so I lost. Well, they'll just dribble out the clock as Keon Rollins will stand there as they count it down to the final 10. And the teams are about to shake hands, as are the coaches, John Kaufman and Brian Thrift. And we have reached the end of the basketball game, an impressive victory for the Mastodons as they defeat Judson by the final score of 69 to 33. Tremendous effort by the Dons offensively and defensively. They go back over the 500 mark at seven and six. And Judson falls to two and 10 for the season. So we'll take a break, be back to wrap things up. The Mastodons with the victory. You're watching Purdue Fort Wayne basketball on the Learfield IMG College Network. The Acme Bar and Grill, where neighbors meet. A Fort Wayne tradition since 1941. We feature nightly dinner specials along with our iconic pizza, wings, and pork tenderloins and barbecue in our family-friendly atmosphere with a retro flair. Additionally, we offer a full bar with 26 beers on tap from various Midwest breweries. We also have an area perfect for private events such as meetings, reunions, and banquets that holds up to 50 people. The Acme Bar and Grill, located in the heart of East State Village, where neighbors meet. At Diamond Residential Mortgage, we understand the importance of keeping pace with technology, and we offer a completely digital loan process to our customers who choose to take advantage of that option. But we also understand the magnitude of a home purchase, and one of our loan officers will work with you every step of the loan process to make sure all your questions are answered and the right type of loan is tailored to fit your needs. See Diamond Residential Mortgage. This is where ambition meets action. Where you can experience everything and become anything. So ask yourself, what are you going to be? A business leader. An artist. A scientist. A difference maker. A game changer. This is an education with purpose. 
We are Purdue University, Fort Wayne. Purdue Fort Wayne basketball. Buy your tickets now. Well, back at the Gates, or I should say the Gates Center is where they're going to play their home opener January 1st here back at the Coliseum. An impressive win for the Mastodons, 69 to 33 over Judson. So in five overall career meetings against the Eagles, the Mastodons have won all five of those contests. They all five have been played in Fort Wayne. As we take a look at the upcoming schedule for the Mastodons, again this Saturday that will be a big game as they take on state rival IUPUI in Indianapolis. That is a 12 p.m. tip-off. And then the final game of their 2019 portion of their schedule will be December 22nd, Sunday, at 1 p.m. tip at Iowa State. And then, Jeff, as we head over to the Gate Center, ringing in the new year, Summit League play as they take on a very, very solid South Dakota game. And that will be a 3 p.m. tip off at the Gate Center. You can see that game right here on the Learfield IMG College Network. And then they're going to hit the road for a while at North Dakota. And that'll be a tough game. When you make that Dakota trip, that is always difficult. Then they also go to Western Illinois. They will return back to Fort Wayne on January 11th against South Dakota State. So final thoughts about the Don's performance. Exactly, Kent. The cupcakes are over. Everything here from now on to the end of the season is legit, as you can see with that upcoming schedule. But tonight, hey, they've got the victory exactly what they were supposed to do. Uh, did they do it in sparkling fashion? I'm not sure. I mean, they only shot 34% from the field. They're going to need a lot better than that performance offensively. Uh, threes, they launched 39 threes, made 10 for 25%. Free throw shooting, uh, I hate to say this, but it was horrendous. 13 for 27, only 48% from the free throw line. So if they're going to be competitive in these next couple games, they're going to have to get those percentages up. But after that performance at Illinois Chicago, they got the win. They feel good about themselves in the in the W column. But uh, performance-wise, they got to polish a few things up before heading down to Indianapolis this weekend. Coach, it's been a pleasure working with you again. It was fun to get the old band back together again, but. I'm sure John Nolan, who also has functions with the Fort Wayne Tin Caps, and he's out in San Diego for the baseball winter meetings. So it's been a pleasure to hook up with you. It's always a lot of fun. Well, this copyrighted broadcast is exclusive presentation of Mastodon Sports Properties, a property of Learfield IMG College under the broadcasting rights granted by Purdue University Fort Wayne. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written of Purdue Fort Wayne and Mastodon Sports Properties. The announcers are employed by Mastodon Sports Properties with the approval of Purdue Fort Wayne Athletics. Mastodon Sports Properties General Manager is Casey Taxi. For Jeff Parrish, my name is Kent Horman. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Once again, the final score, Purdue Fort Wayne 69, Judson 33. This is Mastodon Basketball from Learfield IMG College. This has been a presentation of Learfield IMG College.